This is Ria. Welcome to Little Stories for Tiny People. So I was thinking I would start off today by... Okay, hold on. Seriously, I I just got a new email. Well, I think we all know who this is going to be from. Dear Ria, you must be about to spit out your tea in shock because you've never heard from us before. A few weeks back, the Studio Spiders gifted us their old laptops, and we've spent the last few weeks fixing them up. Now they're good as new, and we can send you emails too. Wait, what? This email is not from the Studio Spiders. Then who is it from? Okay, let me skip past all the beginning stuff. Why don't you have better lighting in here? Are you ever planning on installing wind chimes? I mean, there's no wind in my studio, but okay. Blah, 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 blah. Oh gosh, this is a long email. Okay, here we are. We, the Studio Beatles, felt it necessary to make email contact with you after you unceremoniously changed your podcast theme music without so much as consulting us or the Studio Spiders. Oh, I see. They're teaming up now who are currently charging their laptops after draining the batteries at an afternoon picnic. What? That doesn't even make any sense. And who are the Studio Beatles? All right, I am currently looking up into the corners of my studio and, oh, yep, yep. There they are with their tiny refurbished laptops. Hello up there. Great. Okay, let me get to the end of this. If you make more unauthorized changes, we will have no choice but to make loud clicking noises while you tell your stories, which you will have a really, really, really hard time editing out. Sincerely, the Studio Beatles. Huh, a threat? Seriously, is that how you wanna kick off your email correspondence? All right, look. Beatles, I'm sorry I didn't give you a heads up about the music. I wish I had. But, I mean, is it that big of a deal? And I'm going to make it up to you. Because our story today was going to be about a turtle. But you know what? I'm throwing it out. I am literally tossing that story out the window. Instead, I'll tell a story about a beetle. Okay, so don't do any clicks. Okay, I'm taking your silence as agreement. Let's get to our story. It's called Mr. Turtles, I mean, Mr. Beetles, Storytime. Take it away, Lizzie. Remember, there are no pictures, so you'll have to imagine the pictures in your mind. You can imagine them however you want. Are you ready? Let's go! Long ago, there was a small bug who lived amidst the great blue mountains of the east. Each day, the bug trekked up and across and down the mountains, sometimes even sliding down them. The great blue mountains were vast and tall and round and smooth The little bug knew every brown splotch and every crevice in the mountains, and he loved them dearly. The only thing he did not love was... Um, what what is the bug's name? The... the bug's name? Yeah, uh, the bug needs a name. What do we call him? Old Mr. Beetle adjusted his spectacles and looked around nervously at the semicircle of young bugs and the one terrifying mouse. His neighbor and friend, Gwen, a beetle herself, looked up from the music player she was working and gave him an encouraging smile. Uh, we will call him... uh, we shall call him... Herbert. 
Now then, the only thing Herbert did not love... Herbert? Really? I'm not sure that's his name. Yeah, he, he just doesn't seem like a Herbert. Uh, okay. Never mind. Never mind that. Uh, we'll call him... Francisco. The young bug's eyes lit up. Francisco. Oh yeah, that, that's a good name. Oh, I like that one. Mr. Beetle sighed with satisfaction <sighs> and felt confidence spread throughout his sturdy frame. It was a warm Wednesday evening on the 25th branch, and it was his very first night offering his brand new story time to the young branch dwellers. Mr. Beetle enjoyed doing new things, and given that he was already on the back end of life, he didn't see any point in waiting around to begin doing them. So, as soon as the idea to start a story time dropped into his mind the previous Tuesday, just as he was sitting down to tea with Gwen, he told her about it straight away. Gwen, I'm going to start a weekly story time for young bugs. Oh, okay, Gwen said. Gwen was very agreeable. She could always be counted on to respond in this way. So here he was, telling his very first story. How do you spell Francisco? Oh, uh, P-H, no, 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 F. But things had gotten off to a bit of a bad start. When Mr. Beetle and Gwen had arrived at the 25th branch just outside the branch bookstore, he realized he had forgotten to make a sign to advertise his new story time. What if no one came? Thankfully, the bookstore carried more than just books, as is often the case. They also carried big poster boards and paints. Old Mr. Beetle suffered from a terrible case of the shakes in the leg he once used to write with, mostly letters to the editor and shopping lists, so Gwen offered to paint the sign for him. Mr. Beetle dictated what the sign should say. Old Bug Story Time, Mr. Beetle began. Gwen dutifully painted the letters, She had beautiful penmanship. She does calligraphy in her spare time, you know. And it looked, well, it looked impressive. Mr. Beetle continued dictating. An old bug tells stories at sunset. And Gwen continued painting. And he continued dictating. Young bugs. And Gwen continued painting. And everyone leaves happy. Until. That's it. Old Bug Story Time. An old bug tells stories at sunset to young bugs, and everyone leaves happy. Hmm, Gwen murmured. Mr. Beetle looked at the sign and frowned. Um, it it looks like I ran out of room, Gwen said. Oh, I, I also ran out of paint. Mr. Beetle read the sign out loud. Old Bug Story Time. An old bug tells stories at sunset to young bugs and everyone. By that time, it was sunset. There was no more poster board, no more paint, and no more time. So when old Mr. Beetle sat down for his very first story time, young bugs did come. But everyone came too, namely one terrifying mouse. No one knew how the mouse had made it all the way up to the 25th branch, especially at sunset when mice were known to be taking their nightly baths. But the sign did say everyone could come. So once the mouse assured them that it could not eat bugs due to a severe allergy, old Mr. Beetle began his story. Gwen sat at the back with a music player. So where were we? Oh yes, old Mr. Beetle had just named the little bug in his story Herbert, but then renamed him Francisco. Francisco lived among the great, round, smooth, blue mountains, and he loved everything about the mountains, except there was one thing Francisco did not love. We'll pick up there. 
the only thing Francisco did not love, Mr. Beetle said, drawing this out for maximal suspense, was the aliens. All of the bugs were laughing now. (laughs) Even the terrifying mouse seemed to be laughing. They laughed more once they saw that Mr. Beetle was not laughing. Old Mr. Beetle imagined it would be much easier to tell a story without any young bugs around. But he knew that didn't make any sense. How can you tell a story with no one around? He glanced again at Gwen, and she nodded with encouragement. (coughs) The young bugs and the terrifying mouse fell silent. The only thing Francisco did not love, Mr. Beetle said, and paused, his eyes scanning the group as though to challenge anyone to interrupt further, was the dragon. Mr. Beetle smiled as he saw the looks of surprise and excitement among the bugs and the mouse. As Herbert... Francisco. Francisco. Uh, as Francisco skittered over and around the Blue Mountains, an enormous feathered dragon would sometimes descend on them and shroud them in darkness for many hours at a time. Whenever this happened, Francisco would scurry down into the valley to wait until the dragon flew away. Mr. Beetle nodded at Gwen, and she pressed a button on the music player. Mr. Beetle felt he was hitting his stride. This story time was going fantastically well, and he could imagine himself becoming something of a legend for his well-attended weekly story times, featuring his original stories. Oh, what happens next? came a voice, and Mr. Beetle realized he had stopped telling his story amid his daydream. A tallish young bug, who wore a bright green cap on its head, got up and left. Mr. Beetle had never imagined that someone might get up and leave in the middle of his story. He felt a rush of anxiety, but tried to put it out of his mind. Francisco spent his days climbing up and down the blue mountains. Up and down. Well, that should be up and down. Up and Mr. Down. Beetle noticed the young bug's eyes glazing over. The terrifying mouse yawned. <laughs> Mr. Beetle darted a glance at Gwen and she seemed to know just what to do. She hit another button on the music player. The young bugs and the terrifying mouse blinked a few times and sat up straighter. Francisco spent his days trekking across the incredibly smooth mountainous terrain until one day the great blue mountains began to tremble and sway. <gasps> tremble. What's gonna happen? What? The young bugs and the one terrifying mouse were now again fully engaged in old Mr. Beetle's story. He was pleased with himself and proud of himself. That one tallish bug in the green hat had gotten up to leave and Mr. Beetle had recovered himself quite nicely and he was now coasting towards the end of his story. It was like landing a plane. No problem. The great blue mountains shook, and old Mr. Beetle winced. He'd been hit directly in the eye by a gnat. He blinked his eye, and the gnat fell out of it onto the ground. The young bugs and the one terrifying mouse were all quiet for a moment, their smiles growing bigger and bigger until they could not hold it anymore, and they all started laughing again. (laughs) 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 Old Mr. Beetle sighed. (sighs) 
this was not supposed to be a funny story. The gnat laid there on the ground for a moment, then popped up I'm okay. and flew away. The young bugs and the terrifying mouse laughed until they were too tired to laugh anymore. Oh, my exoskeleton is getting sore. <laughs> when all was quiet, he continued his story, somewhat deflated. <clears throat> The mountains shook and shuddered. Oops, sorry, I hit the wrong button. Gwen fiddled with the music player. Mr. Beetle's audience giggled quietly. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you, Gwen. Uh, Herbert... Francisco. His name's Francisco. Does this guy even know his own story? Francisco sought shelter in the valley of the mountains as the dragon descended from the sky and landed nearby. The dragon seemed to be watching over the mountains with intense interest. And then... Mr. Beetle glanced at Gwen. She pressed a couple of buttons. And then... Francisco covered his eyes with his feet, and there was a great crackling sound. A very tremendous crackling sound for minutes at a time. And finally, when the sound stopped, Francisco uncovered his eyes and... Wait, he, he didn't even see what happened? Why wasn't he looking? Oh, wasn't he curious to know what was going on? Uh, well... Uh, he, he was, uh, he, he was curious, but, well, I, he was a bit afraid, I suppose. I don't get it. Old Mr. Beetle scowled. Perhaps this story time idea was a big mistake. Here he was, trying to finish his story, which up until that point had been going fantastically well, he had been on track to become something of a legend on the 25th branch, after all. And now this, this feedback from his audience was just too much to even... When the sound stopped, Francisco uncovered his eyes. Mr. Beetle went on, determined to land this plane of a story. And the great... Blue Mountains of the West. The East. Aren't they in the East? Uh, the Great Blue Mountains of the East were gone. Old Mr. Beetle could sense questions rising in his listeners, so he barreled on before they could interrupt further. Dragons. Dragons? More, more dragons? More dragons. Three new dragons had appeared. It seemed they had destroyed the Great Blue Mountains. They had raised them to rubble. All that was left was shards of mountains scattered throughout the valley. Gwen hit a button on the music player. The young bugs and the terrifying mouse exchanged some looks, but said nothing. Francisco hid in the valley for many days, until the dragons flew away. Then he crept out from his hiding spot and trekked around, though now there was nothing much to trek upon. His mountains were gone. After many weeks, Francisco accepted that the mountains would never rise again, and he went off in search of a better life. That was many, many years ago. Wait, is this story about you? <gasps> Are you Herbert Francisco? Old Mr. Beetle chuckled. <laughs> well, I have to get my stories from somewhere. What am I supposed to dream them up out of thin air? Was that the end of the story? The eggs hatched and then you left? Eggs? There were no eggs in the story. And no, that's not the end of the story. Old Mr. Beetle looked at Gwen. 
Francisco grew up and went to work as a very talented, supremely talented, bootmaker. At this, old Mr. Beetle did a shuffle with his feet to display his impressive boots. The terrifying mouse yawned loudly. For many years, Francisco was the most successful. Old Mr. Beetle continued his story for several minutes, telling Francisco's entire life story. And on Friday afternoons, he liked to read a book. Finally, he stopped talking. There was complete silence. Except for the snoring. It was dark by then. Old Mr. Beetle and Gwen packed up their things. Gwen decided to leave the music player there on the 25th branch to give the young bugs and the mouse some nice music to sleep to. Mr. Beetle rolled up his poster and tucked it beneath a leg. Well, that went well. Oh, oh yes. Gwen... Do you think it was a good thing that I put them to sleep? Oh, um, yes, I I think so. Hmm, okay. Gwen? Yes? Why did that young bug mention eggs? What did that have to do with my story? Gwen squinted and was silent. She seemed to be thinking carefully about what to say. After a long pause, she shrugged and smiled, one of those encouraging smiles of hers. Old Mr. Beetle and Gwen ambled to their homes, which were just a few twigs apart. They agreed to meet for tea the following Tuesday and to meet for story time the following Wednesday. Old Mr. Beetle went to sleep that night feeling like he had finally found his true calling in life. He was no longer just the most supremely talented bootmaker on the tree. He was now a legendary storyteller. Ah, new email. Dear Rhea, we still have many, and we do mean many, concerns about your podcast decision-making abilities, but we decided not to ruin your recording with clicks this time. Mr. Beetle was a rather endearing character, and we'd like to hear from him again. Signed, The Studio Beatles. Aww. Thank you. Oh, P.S. Gwen should have had more lines. (laughs) I agree. Gwen probably should have had more lines. Maybe next time she will. Little Stories for Tiny People is written, performed, and produced by me, Rhea Pector. Peter Kay runs my website, littlestoriestinypeople.com, and puts my stories on the internet for all of you to enjoy. Big thanks to Lizzie for the super important reminder message at the beginning. And thank you so much to Oliver, Carolina, Pedro, and Kreda for the professional quality sound effects used in this story. You can contribute your voice to the podcast by using the Voice Memo app on a smartphone and emailing your sound files to Rhea at littlestoriestinypeople.com. And thank you, as always, for listening in.